Hello, I'm Greg Jarrett. You're in the strategy room. Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton is still trying to sew up her party's nomination, looking for wins tonight in primary contests in Kentucky and Oregon. Clinton is just 143 delegates shy of the number needed to secure the nomination, but rival Bernie Sanders, he has won 10 of the last 12 contests and is determined to stay in the race for the party's convention in July. Joining me now to talk about the race, Democratic strategist David Mercer, Republican strategist Brad Blakeman. David, um, is, is this a situation in which Hillary Clinton uh, cannot seem to shake Bernie Sanders? And because of that, she cannot fully and squarely focus on her upcoming opponent, Donald Trump. Uh, absolutely not. And she'll come to focus on Donald Trump once he is the nominee. He may be presumptive, but that's not the nominee. She's got to and waste some money here on Sanders, right? I mean, that's money that could be used on Donald Trump, not, not to mention her rhetoric. Uh, if you compare money that is going into the bank for the general election uh, for a uh, nominee on the Democratic side, there is plenty of it and more being raised. If you look at the same, all you're going to see is Donald Trump raiding the RNC Treasury because uh, he himself uh, has said he's not willing to go after uh, donors to fund what needs to be likely a billion dollars to get through the general election. So money is not the issue here. The issue is when you are the nominee, Nominee, then you take on the opposition in the general election. She has not secured the nomination yet, as you alluded to, 140 more plus uh, delegates necessary. And she's going to play this out to the end. And, you know, that's the uh, expectation and the right yeah. of any uh, contender, including Sanders, albeit Sanders does not have a pathway to the nomination because uh, he's not yeah. going to be able to peel off superdelegates and he doesn't have, he'd have to win 75 percent of delegates yeah, going and through many the remaining. Yeah, many of them are proportional, so you can't do it. In fact, let's put Correct. up on the screen Correct. if we can. Um, Oregon. 61, uh, you know, I reading, my, need my glasses, 61 delegates and Kentucky 55. Brad, um, does it appear to you that the Democratic Party is not fully behind Hillary Clinton? And indeed, since March 1st, Bernie Sanders has won a majority of the delegates. Um, you know, are Democrats kind of getting buyer's remorse here? Oh, there's no doubt about it. The coronation has not gone uh, to the palace's liking, that's for sure. And they have been able to shake Bernie. And it's clear, you know, Democrats like to point to Republicans. Donald Trump beat uh, 16 other contenders. Hillary can't shake a socialist, one, con one real contender. And the fact that it's gone this long shows the division in the Democratic Party. There are, uh, there are a significant amount of people within that party that can't stand Hillary. They don't trust her. They don't like her. And by the way, the most important primary is yet to be had, and that's the FBI primary, and that's still looming. And if she loses that, she's done. You know, David, uh, Hillary might, Clinton, Greg, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, what I, if I'd like to say, you know, look, she's got more votes than Donald Trump. She's got more delegates than Donald Trump. And she's got more unity, as we alluded to superdelegates. Well, she's got more leadership and more elected officials. more delegates because they have more delegates. more delegates at stake in the Democratic Party. But, but than, nonetheless, she's got more delegates. Well, of course and she does. That said, <laughs> that said, you still have the Speaker of the House uh, uh, holding out on Donald Trump. You have Kasich uh, holding out on Donald Trump in yeah. terms of endorsements. You've got a lot of building that Donald Trump has to do to bring his party together. Together. So uh, let's not yeah. put the switch on that. <laughs> uh, Brad, um, Hillary Clinton has now decided that she's going to put her husband in charge of the United States <laughs> economy. Uh, I, I could have sworn the, you know, the president and you know, Council of Economic Advisors and you know, uh, the Fed and, <laughs> and Congress were all in charge of uh, the economy, not Bill Clinton. Well, apparently it looks like we're going to get a third term of Bill Clinton. Hillary might as well just, if she were elected, go back to the East Wing. Because if you're going to surrender uh, your, your, the most important portfolio of a president and what people actually vote on when they go in the voting booth is with their pocketbooks. The economy is the number one issue. And you're going to turn that over to Bill Clinton? 
I mean, that, is, that, that speaks volumes about your own ability and your own thoughts and what you're bringing to, to the office. I think that is going to be the worst decision she's ever made, and it's going to come back to haunt her in November. Well, her well, new slogan clarify. may be, vote for Bill. Well, well exactly. let's clarify what the issue is, and that is he is an experienced former president that made history being the second only Democrat. Yeah, he made Democrat history getting vote. impeached. If I, if, I, if I may finish, please. Okay, <laughs> second only to uh, Roosevelt to be elected as a Democrat to two terms. His economy or the economy he ushered in with a surplus handing off to Bush was uh, stellar. And third, it's not to the exclusion of the Treasury or the Federal Reserve or others. It is in addition to, to bring his experience to those uh, cabinet officials and others, and it's yeah. not one or to the other. So or it's not a co-presidency is what you're telling me, right? I, I'm not, it's not a co-presidency, nor right. is it to eliminate Treasury or Fed. <laughs> okay. Guys, good to see you. Brad Blakeman, you. David Mercer, for complete coverage of the 2016 election, go to foxnews.com. I'm Greg Jarrett. Thanks for watching.